Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and today we're going to be taking a look at creating nuclear explosions in Blender. I would not have guessed it, but this is actually really tricky and uh, hard to get right. Nuclear explosions are so big that there are hundreds, thousands of little factors that play a part in the way it looks, and replicating all those small details is almost impossible. If it is possible, it's very hard to do. So in this tutorial, I'm going to try to get around creating all those small details and try to break it down into something simple and easier to handle. This might not be a physically accurate or correct simulation, but it does look pretty good. Anyways, with that being said, let's jump right into Blender and get started. Open up a new scene in Blender, delete everything, and add in a UV sphere. Here I'll go to frame 15, scale it out a little bit, and uh, add a keyframe. I'll move back to frame 5 and scale it down quite a bit. Um, just so that it scales up really fast. This sphere is going to be emitting the mushroom cloud part of the explosion. Animate the location of the sphere as well. Next I'm going to add in a circle. I will tab into edit mode, hit E, S to scale it in a bit and move the scaled in ring up. I'll hit I scaling on frame 5 and then I'll move out to maybe frame 50 and scale it out on only the X and Y axes quite a bit. I will adjust the keyframes, moving the first keyframe all the way back to frame 0 so that it starts expanding just slightly before the sphere does. And I'll make sure to only scale it out on the X and Y axes always, not giving any Z keyframes. Make sure the sphere never actually encompasses the circle and that the circle is always slightly ahead of the sphere. I'm going to tab into edit mode and hit control N to fix the normals. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to select the sphere and hit object, quick effects, quick smoke. I will scale up the domain quite a bit that Blender adds in, scale it down on the Z so that it's more square and then I will move it up so that the explosion is sitting on the floor of the domain. I'll enable adaptive domain and add in a sun lamp so that our smoke is visible in the viewport. I'll set the sun lamp up to 6 just preparing for the render. I'm going to hit I on the surface value of the sphere under its smoke settings to animate the amount of smoke that the sphere is actually giving off. Then I'm going to move ahead a bit and change its value to 0, also hitting I to add another keyframe. Then I will turn the domain's resolution divisions to 64. I'm going to go back to the keyframe and scale it out, um, hitting Shift Z so that it only scales on the X and Y axes. This will make the mushroom cloud a little flatter. Next I'll grab the circle that emits the shockwave and I will set that to smoke flow as well. I will turn its temperature difference down to 0 0.03 at the moment. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn up the resolution divisions to 128. And then I will turn under the smoke and flames the reaction speed to 0.4. That seems to look pretty good. I'm going to turn the reaction speed down to 0.3 and save the file. Next I'm going to add in a force field turbulence. Go to the graph editor. I'm going to add a single keyframe on the Z. I'll go under modifiers and grab a generator. I'll set it to 0.1 and then switch back to the timeline. That way it moves up steadily on the Z axis. This turbulence field is just to break up the smoke a bit. I'll set its strength to 12 and its size to 0.8. Next I will turn the time scale for our simulation down to 0.3. I'll go under smoke cache and choose open VDB. Then I'll choose zip for the compression type and float half for the data depth. That will just make it so there's less information stored on your hard drive. 
Then I will hit bake. Now the bake is done, I'm going to hit play and just watch the animation that we got. And it looks alright. I'm going to free the bake though and uh, change some settings. First of all, I'm going to move the sphere up on the Z axis and hit I location so that it um, moves up more vertically and uh, pushes the smoke higher up in the air. Next I'll turn the resolution divisions up to 256. Set the end keyframe to 100 and hit bake again. Unless you have a pretty good computer, you do not have to do all the baking that I'm doing. And you also do not have to use such high divisions for your test simulations. The closer your resolution divisions are throughout the testing process, the closer your explosion will look the way you want it. Gosh, that's confusing. I'm going to free the bake again and go back to the first frame. Grab the sphere and... Uh, I'm going to make sure to move it up a little bit on the Z axis again and hit I location. I am going to select the sphere and scale it up on the Z, hit I scaling. Save that and I'm going to hit bake again. Wait a minute and come back and then this is what I've got. And this is looking a lot closer to a nuclear explosion. I'm going to hit free bake. Just turn the resolution divisions up one and then back down to reset the simulation in the viewport. I'll move the sphere up a bit on the Z and hit I location. Then I'll turn the temperature difference up just slightly and hit bake yet again. And here I am back. Um, it seems to be rising slightly faster. Make sure that your sphere and your shockwave mesh are intersecting at the beginning so that the smoke from the sphere pulls the smoke from the shockwave up with it. That will give you that smooth fall off down from the main fireball into the shockwave. Next I'm going to hit shift A and add in a camera. I will turn its resolution to 1024 by 1024. And um, then I'm just going to pull it back along the Y axis so that we can view our explosion. Once you're in the camera view, you can hit the home key to fit the camera to the screen. I'm going to go and set its focal length to 50 so that it looks like we're further away looking at the explosion. Then I'll move it back a bit and rotate it up. You don't want to cut any part of the explosion off if you're going to be using it for an asset, but you also don't want to be wasting any render space. Next, I'm going to open up a small preview render down at the bottom so that we can view our shader as we work on it. I'll move to a frame where there's a pretty good balance between fire and smoke and where the explosion has begun to develop a mushroom shape. I'll go to the object settings and uh, I'll just skip back to the first frame so that the values are a little quicker and I'll turn off all the ray cycles visibility for both the sphere and the shockwave meshes. Next I'll go under light paths and turn the volume bounces to 2, transmission bounces down to 2, the glossy bounces to 0, and the diffuse bounces also to 2. I'll turn the minimum bounces off and the max bounces to 2 as well. I'll turn the max transparency up just slightly. It doesn't really matter unless you have more transparent elements in the scene. Um, however, I just like to do it as good practice for volumetric and transparent rendering. Next, I'll switch to the material for the domain and start working on that. First thing I'm going to do is add in a shader, and this will be an emission shader. I'll plug this into the add shader input that has been created for us by Cycles. Next, I will add the attribute node, set it to flame, and plug its color into the color of the emission. I will drag the density attribute away from the multiply math node and add a brightness and contrast node between those two. I'll turn the contrast up a bit to 0.4 and the brightness up to 0.1. Then I'll turn the density on the multiply math node up. I'll try 40 to start out with. Next I'll turn the emission strength for the fire up a bit and add a color ramp in between the flame attribute node and the emission shader. 
I'll start painting in fire colors. Um, bigger flame, as in nuclear explosions, I think tends to have redder color, um, especially as the flame has gotten older. So when I'm creating a campfire, I would use more yellows. When I'm creating a nuclear explosion, I would use more reds. Next, I'll turn the emission strength up just a little bit. I'll add a background in, background color, just make it bluish so we get some more realistic lighting. Then I will drag our color attribute node out and add a mix RGB between that and the volume absorption and volume scatter. Turn this up quite a bit so that we don't get such a dark color in our explosion. You can also use this RGB curves ramp to adjust the color of your smoke. We're not burning gasoline here, it's mostly dust and a lot of vapor. So you don't want to make black smoke like you would get in a gasoline or oil fire. I'm going to add a color ramp in between the brightness and contrast node and the multiply math node. I will um, adjust the values just so that the edge of our smoke is sharp and not smooth fall off. I'll do this by dragging the black end of the color ramp forward a little bit and uh, I add a gray ramp node in here but end up deleting that later. Then I'm going to save the file and go to the UV image editor and I'm going to prepare for a render. I'll leave the samples at 32 and just go ahead and hit render. And that's what we got from this render. I'm going to start by tweaking the shader. Um, I'm going to add in a math node and then I'm going to add in a shader mix shader. I'll plug this in between the first add shader and the second one. I'll plug the math node into the fac of the mix shader and then I'll add in a holdout shader. I'll plug this into the bottom socket of the mix shader. Then I'll set the math node to greater than and I'll plug the smoke attribute into the top socket of the greater than math node. Set its value down to 0.1 or smaller. And uh, if your smoke disappears, either set the greater than value to less than or just switch your holdout to the top socket. This should speed up your render a little bit, not by a whole lot, but definitely enough to matter when doing an animation. Next, I'm going to add in a plane, pull this up just a little bit, add a new texture, and I'm going to switch this to holdout as well. This will cut off the bottom of the shockwave for the nuclear explosion and make it look like it's sitting on the ground more. If you want to, you can add a displacement to this plane and give your shockwave a little bit of randomness. Next, I'm going to hit free bake on the nuclear explosion and uh, save the file. I'm going to turn on high resolution samples. I'm going to grab the smoke force field and turn its size to 1. I'll grab the domain again and turn its end frame to 250. Save the file and hit bake. Alright, here I am back with the finished bake. I did some renders of that simulation. Um, and it looks pretty decent. Um, I'm pretty happy with this explosion. Obviously it does not look totally huge, but there is still a little bit of work to be done. And I think the smoke might be just slightly on the bright side. So too bright in color. I'm going to turn up the contrast between the attribute node a bit. And uh, delete the gray value on the color ramp node between the density attribute and the multiply math node. Turn the emission strength value up to 60. Add a brightness and contrast node in between the color ramp and the flame attribute. I'll turn the contrast up just slightly, don't turn it up too much though. And then I'll do another render. And here's what we get from that render. As you can see, it does look a little better. Maybe still too bright though. So I'll turn the brightness down on the RGB curves and turn the density on the multiply math node up to 75. I'm going to rotate the sun lamp to give us a more interesting lighting and turn the resolution down to 50%. Then I will do a viewport render. So this just gives us a basic animation of the viewport. 
If you open up a new file, switch to video editor and hit shift A image, add in all those files that you just rendered out. Then it should give you a basic animation representation of the smoke in the viewport. I'm setting the resolution to 1024 by 1024 to give it the same dimensions as our smoke simulation and as you can see this gives us a much faster easier playing representation of the viewport for the other blend file. And that looked pretty good. I liked the timing so I think I'm going to go with that simulation. Setting the resolution back to 100% and uh, then I'm going to go under sampling make sure to set the clamping up to three both indirect and direct I'll turn the filter glossy to three as well and then I'll hit animation and this is what we get from that animation although that seemed pretty simple like I just got everything right the first time unfortunately it is not that simple and it may take you a little bit to get this right in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of a nuclear explosion is the shockwave it sends out through the air. Um, unfortunately, that's a tutorial in and of itself, so I'm not going to be showing you how to create that here. Another thing is that compositing is more than half of what makes a nuclear explosion look so big. Make sure to put plenty of atmosphere between it and the foreground, and uh, you should have a pretty massive looking explosion. Hopefully now you should be able to create your own nukes. It can be pretty useful in some sort of nuke movie. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.